Hey everyone, today we're continuing to explore some of my new Daniel Smith paints and I thought we can play with uh, this one, Lunar Red Rock, it's called. So their Lunar line, if you're not familiar, is extremely granulating paints, which I personally love and I'm excited to see how this one uh, plays with the other paints in my palette. So if you want to see more videos in this series, I will link them below, the ones that are already up, or if you're watching this in the future, then probably all of them. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you'll know when I post a new video, like this video, and leave a comment. That really helps me get to new people because of the way that YouTube works and it's totally free. So let's get to playing. I decided to go with a setup I vaguely remember from Jane Blundell's website. Don't go there. I'm kidding. Go there. But beware, because she has um, swatched pretty much every watercolor brand out there and what I like, I mean, you know, you can get lost in those areas of her website. It's a little bit intimidating, but she does have really nice mixing uh, tablets, I guess, or swatches or whatever. And you can take a look and kind of get a good idea on how colors mix. However, of course, it's better to do these things on your own. So I didn't go back to see how she did that. But I vaguely remember there was like this globe or like a, a circle of the paint and then just swatching it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch it with my most used colors and uh, see how it behaves. Now, if you are familiar with color theory, these swatches, you know, they're probably not going to be a huge surprise to you. Um, they weren't to me, but what is interesting is the granulation. And that's kind of what I really wanted to get out of this because this is the reason that I bought these uh, colors and I want to see how they granulate in mixtures. Uh, I also wanted to see how they compare to other shades that you might have already in your stash. So I really wanted to include that and talk about that so you can really get a good idea if this is something you want to add to your collection. You know, a tube of Daniel Smith paint is, you know, it's an investment, especially if you're like me and you can't just buy one tube. Um, it really adds up. So I hope these videos, uh, this kind of series of exploring these paints will be helpful to you because all of them kind of the, all the four that I bought are very similar to, I would guess, kind of like popular, I would call them um, colors that probably most of us have in our collection. So uh, I thought it was worth it to take a closer look and really see if they were worth adding to one's collection. And I started with just simply watering down the paint and seeing how it looks with, um, you know, increasing amounts of water. You can see it's very, very opaque. And when I started playing with it, the first color that kind of popped in my head was Indian Red. It's kind of that behavior of like super opaque uh, paint. But when it comes to the actual shade, it's close but it's a little bit on the kind of pinkier side and I'm saying pink very loosely because these are or this is uh, same like Indian red very earthy colors but kind of the undertone is more pink a little bit cooler than Indian red which I personally love so spoiler alert I love this color for me it's a great substitute for Indian red and yeah, so let's look a bit at the uh, mixtures. I started with ultramarine blue and I'm, I wasn't surprised to see that it gives these really beautiful muted purples. If you add a little bit to ultramarine blue, it just kind of tones it down, which would be great for sky 
And, you know, for like urban sketching or anything that is you're kind of aspiring to more realistic shades, you don't want just super, super bright colors. Uh, I think this would be beautiful. Now I'm switching on to Naples yellow. And I have to say also here, I actually, I really, really loved the mixtures that I got with this one. With Naples Yellow, Naples Yellow is also opaque. I have the Schmincke version, it has white in it. I think I suspect that most Naples Yellows uh, have white in them. And so you get kind of very muddy mixtures, which I love when they are watered down. I really love that and I really think it adds, um, it adds something to uh, a painting when you just get that hint of like muddy color. So I really, really love the tones that I got here, probably more closer to the the color of the lunar red earth as opposed to like the color of the Naples yellow. So I would just like take the lunar red rock, sorry, not earth, red rock, and just add a little bit of Naples yellow to it to get that shade that I uh, really, really like, which is a very uh, grayish light brown. So moving on to the pinks, I kind of mixed it up. Uh, I didn't, uh, you'll see that I go back and forth with blues and yellows and pinks. I hope that doesn't bother you, but it was just the easy way to work for me. And I started with quinacridone rose. It's kind of a staple pink for me. And, you know, this is kind of where it gets kind of a little bit boring <laughs> for me. When I do these swatches, for me, the most interesting shades are the one that are furthest away from the color that I'm testing on the color wheel. I really, um, I, I really like seeing how colors kind of neutralize each other. And when you're talking, you know, this is a very kind of earthy, brownish, reddish pink. So when you mix it with reds or with pinks, it's, you get beautiful colors. Don't get me wrong. You get beautiful colors. I can see myself using it, but it's a little bit more boring. You know, you kind of, it's all kind of similar. So uh, I had a lot more fun mixing it with the blues and the turquoises and those colors that are um, further away or almost opposite it on the color wheel. Okay, now I'm uh, switching to the mixes with Cerulean Blue Chromium. That color, that blue is in the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. And these mixtures are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I can see these in uh, skies, so beautiful. You get these muted blues, almost grays, when you kind of really neutralize them. You can see those uh, swatches that are closer to the middle of the page on the left uh, page. Beautiful. And of course, the granulation shows. I think these, if you love granulation, mixing two granulating colors, that's like magic to me. <laughs> and uh, we'll see it in the other video in the series, the, um, the one where I play with Lunar Earth, which is um, kind of, I would say it's, it's, um, it's like a, a very granulating version of like, kind of like a burnt sienna, orangey burnt sienna. Um, that color is a little bit, mm, I don't know, interesting, different, challenging. We'll get to that. But this one, this one was just pure fun. And everything I tried, I really loved. So in the middle row, we have the mixtures with quinacridone gold. You can see you can get those kind of uh, really earthy browns with this. And especially for me, I don't like uh, having browns in my palette. I don't... Uh, I hardly ever use them, and if I do use them, I really prefer to mix my own. So I know I have these options with this, but um, yeah, it, it's pretty. I know a lot of you probably really enjoy using browns, so I really wanted to include also those, but you know, they don't sink to me <laughs> like other mixtures do. 
<laughs> so in the third row there, I mixed it with quinacridone coral. And you can see you get these really nice um, kind of, they remind me of Potter's Pink in the mixtures, which I really liked because while I love Potter's Pink, it's not a color I use often enough to include in most of my palettes. So I don't think I will be taking it with me. I'm also kind of t testing out colors here that I want to take with me to California. And um, yeah, I think Potter's Pink I won't be taking, but this is kind of a similar color to it. And you know, it granulates like Potter's Pink. It's a little bit more earthy, just a tad browner than uh, Potter's Pink. But then if you mix it with just a little bit of something like Quinacridone Coral, you get a very similar effect or even uh, Quinacridone Rose. Just give it a little bit, a hint of pink. And then the last mixture was with my uh, Schmincke Brilliant Purple, which is kind of like the Holbein Bright Rose. So kind of a more fuchsia pink. Um, you get really beautiful colors. I think they would be beautiful for florals um, because they're slightly less, you know, really, really, I don't want to use the word garish because I love <laughs> these colors when they are pure, like the whole band bright rose. But I think, um, I think for a painting, it would probably work a little bit better to tone them down. Okay, this is where we're getting into magic the magic kingdom of color mixing with this paint and that's mixing it with the turquoises. So I started with my cobalt teal shade. PG50 is a pigment. I'm using in my current palette the cobalt turquoise. That's how Schmincke calls their PG50 shade. And these two together, magic, 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 magic. I will have close-up shots at the end so you can take a better look. You can pause and look at the screen. I really want you to get a good idea of what we're dealing with here. So you can decide if this is something that appeals to you or if this is maybe too much for you if you don't like uh, such granulations in your paintings. So I started with cobalt teal, then I moved all the way to the pure lunar red rock, and then I gradually started mixing it in with my Helio turquoise, which is kind of like phthalo turquoise, only mine is from Shiminke. It's a single pigment turquoise. It's a little bit a tad bluer than the phthalo turquoises I'm familiar with, but it's kind of the same thing, you know, very uh, tinting, very intense color. Again, the mixtures here are beautiful. I don't think the Helio Turquoise is a granulating color. A cobalt Turquoise is. And still the granulation really, really shines through and you get these gorgeous semi-neutrals up to a really interesting gray. Um, you know, the, the, neut the most neutral color you can get with Turquoise and this Lunar Red Rock is a gray that has the granulation of the lunar red rock. So it has that kind of brownish pinkish granulation. Really interesting, really beautiful. I can see myself using this. I love this. Then I moved on to mixing it with cobalt violet. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful combinations. You get these kind of pinkish mixtures. Lovely. And then I kind of started playing with it with the more neutral colors in my palette. So now I'm gradually adding Sodalite Genuine. Again, you get these beautiful, very, very muted purple colors. Lovely. I didn't film every single mixture that I made and narrating this, I kind of found it more enjoyable to watch than I thought. So maybe in the next videos, I will try to include everything. Let me know in the comments if you liked this, if this was helpful to you. So in this photo, you can see how the color looks watered down as well as the mixtures with ultramarine blue on the left and then cerulean blue chromium on the right side. Here you can see how it compares to some of the other neutrals in my palettes. And I think actually the closest match that I had is on the top right corner, which is the Aquarius. Those are Polish watercolors that I reviewed on my channel. Uh, Kaput Motum is the shade name. Really, really has the same vibe to it. I know Aquarius are a little bit harder to 
find. So if you have Kaput Motum in your stash and you really enjoy it, maybe this is worth checking out because it's probably a little bit more granulating and a little bit warmer. And another close resemblance was it's somewhere between Indian red and Potter's pink. Um, I think those two are the closest. You can see I have the Daniel Smith one. It's the middle row on the left side and then Schminke's Potter Pink on the right. So moving on to some more mixes, you can get a better look of how it mixed with the pinks on the top row. And then on the bottom row, we have green gold on the left side. And then we have neutral tint on the right side. And here we have the mixtures with cerulean blue chromium on the top going from left to right and then cobalt blue. You can see the beautiful, beautiful granulations. Then on the bottom row we have quin gold on the left and then Indian yellow. You can see again lovely browns. Less my thing but I recognize that they're very beautiful. Here we can see the mixtures with Queen Coral on the top and then Schminke's Brilliant Purple. And on the bottom, Neutral Tint on the far left, then the mixtures with Moon Glow. And at the end, going to the right side with Indigo. Really nice, deeper colors. You can really add that warmth and a bit of that brownish shade to cooler, darker colors. Here's a close-up look at the mixtures with cobalt turquoise or cobalt teal depending on the brand and cobalt violet. I think you will have to agree it's magic. I really tried to edit it so it looks as close to real life. Turquoises are always an issue with um, cameras and screens and all that so hopefully I managed to do well. Look at that prettiness. <laughs> I love it. So here's a close up. You can look. I think just ultramarine blue is such a popular color. It's uh, good info to see how these two mix. And then probably more interesting, in my opinion, are the mixes with the cerulean blue chromium. I think, you know, for skies. I mean, look at those grays. So, so pretty. And that's it. We've seen those. Uh, this is with Naples Yellow and then in the bottom Quinacridone Rose. I hope you found this video helpful. I will see you again in another one soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!